super excited to have April with me today. She is a mother of two and a speech pathologist for 21 years. I actually discovered April by following Susie with Start a Mom blog, who is showcasing April's success as a blogger as well. So that's exciting that you have accomplished both of those things. And that is a, another amazing mom first career, which I'm hoping to showcase soon as well. But what really excited me was to hear that you were able to do this on a part time basis. Yes. And I instantly wanted to learn more about it. Um, I have already showcased the flexible world of nursing, and I'm just trying to find as many healthcare opportunities out there for girls are, who are super excited to be moms one day, but they want to have a flexible career on the side that allows them Wonderful. to be there for them. So thank you so much for being here, April. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us how you discovered speech pathology and knew it was the right career path for you. Yes, um, it's hard to believe when I say, when I hear you say 21 years, that's a really long time. Um, but it's been a wonderful career and I hope to do it uh, through retirement. Um, so when I was in college, things were a little bit different than they probably are for young uh, people now when they start college. A lot of people at that point, you know, when I graduated 27 years ago, by the way, um, a lot of people were undecided in their majors and they really weren't sure what to do. And I'm sure that's still the case for a lot of people. But I uh, took my first year just general education and I still wasn't sure. So I used my uh, college's career planning and placement center to do some, some testing to see what my interests were. And on every single category, speech pathologist kept coming up to the top. So I thought, why not? So I just took the general speech pathology course and fell in love. So, and it's been a perfect fit, so. That's exciting to yeah. hear. I went to college a very long time ago as well, but I didn't have a resource that, like that that I was at least aware of when I was going to college. So I'm glad that you brought that up and that is something that listeners who are teens preparing for college might consider doing as well to help them kind of figure that out. As a matter of fact, um, I thought it was such a wonderful service that I ended up doing my graduate assistantship there and they paid for my graduate school. So it was awesome and all, all around for me. So That's fantastic. Yeah. So I know that I was talking to my daughters about this and they're like, what are speech pathologists? What sure. do they even do? And I thought, you know what? I bet there's a lot of girls out there that are as familiar with this career choice. So just tell us what there is to know about speech pathology. Okay. So with speech pathology, that first of all, there's so many different areas of specialization, and I don't think people always realize that, but uh, the two main occupations that speech pathologists can choose is a school-based setting uh, or a medical-based setting. So I can't speak to a lot of the details about the school speech pathologist because that's not what I do, um, but I think most people are more familiar with that. Uh, they work with children in K through 12, depending on what area of, you know, what school that they're in, and they work on speech and language deficits in the school system. Um, but I chose the medical path, and I've worked in both a hospital and outpatient clinic primarily uh, throughout my career. So um, I happen to work with adults. You can also work with children in, in hospital settings, but I work with only adults and I see patients primarily that have some sort of neurological uh, deficit that has caused them to have speech language difficulties. Um, and it's not just speech and language we work with. Uh, we work with uh, speech language swallowing, which a lot of people had no idea that we see a lot of people in the hospital setting that have difficulty swallowing, um, voice and also cognition. So a lot of areas. So our population, um, is a lot of stroke patients in the hospital, um, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis. Um, my specific caseload, I see a lot of people that have had sustained a concussion as well. So it's just super fun and exciting. I love it after all of these years. It's just really interesting. That's super interesting. So um, when you separate the two environments, the school environment opposed right. to like a medical environment, I'm guessing that there's a little bit more income potential in the medical environment opposed to the education, or do you even know if there's a difference there? Well, um, let me just say, if I'm being very honest, uh, 
speech pathology is not the most lucrative occupation, um, but uh, in the school-based setting, it is uh, what the teachers would make is what a speech pathologist makes in a school setting. Uh, in a hospital-based setting, it's fairly variable in different parts of the country. Um, a lot of speech pathologists in uh, nursing homes actually make more money per hour um, than you know typical hospital-based speech pathologists. So, and the the nursing homes, by the way, that would be considered a medical-based speech therapist. Um, but it's still not fantastic. That would only be that would probably be my only negative. It's mm -hmm. it's slightly better than working in a school system, but not much. <laughs> so, kind of a crazy question for you. Since we're talking about mom first careers, and I've been chatting with a lot of moms who've been able to, oh, there goes my cat, sorry about that. <laughs> I've been talking with a lot of moms who've been able to start businesses out of their homes. Is speech pathology one of those that could possibly happen in a setting within the home or not at all? Um, I've never done that. I'll just throw that out there. but. Um, I know that there are some practices that people are trying to do, the tele, um, I guess, therapy sessions. Um, it's really hard. After doing this for so long, it's hard for me. I'm a little bit old school. There's so much personal connection when you're one-on-one -on -one with an individual. And a lot of people we work with, there's um, a lot of tasks that you have to switch out information you're working on, you know, on a desktop or whatever it might be to help them. So it's possible, but it will be really tricky, I think. Um, I've thought about that a lot, you know, as, as this career changes, you know, through time, especially as um, things are getting more advanced, techno uh, the technology is getting more advanced. I think it's possible. So I'm not going to say it's not. Uh, an option for people, but right now it's unlikely at this point that, okay. that people will do that. That That's really good information to know. And I think it's kind of nice to think through that process as you're sure. considering a career option. So tell me what's required educationally. Is it a bachelor's degree, a master's degree? What's necessary? A uh, master's degree. Okay, perfect. And is it just for the most part, you get your four-year undergraduate degree, right. and it's just a, an additional two years, or is it a three-year additional it's graduate a program? program. Um, okay. And I don't know if things have changed since I went through the program, but I do know that at that point it was it was fairly competitive, so grades were pretty important, um, and there were usually a lot of applicants um, that they you know would narrow it down to. I know when I applied, for example, they told me that there were over 250 applicants, and they took 25, so it was incredibly okay. stressful, um, but it's also very doable. So. Um, and there are a lot of schools that have great programs. Okay, that's good to know. And I know that the nursing industry is quite competitive as sure. well, and grades yeah. really, really matter. So they do. start focusing right as soon as you can in high school, getting those good right. grades. Um, so, excuse me, how much flexibility have you had in this in this industry, given the fact that you're a wonderful mom, and that's important to you as well? Is it something that you feel like has had a decent amount of flexibility? Have you kind of had to earn that flexibility over time by working full-time initially and tapering down? Kind of give us a feel for that. So when I had my first child, which he's 15, um, prior to that, I was full-time. And as soon as I went back after maternity leave, um, I went to two to three days. I'm trying to remember at that point, was I three days uh, per week? Um, and I did have some experience at that point. Um, so I, I don't want to have a blanket statement that says that, you know, there's not that opportunity fresh out of school to work part time. I really think that there's a huge demand. I know just within the facilities where I work, um, it's hard. It's hard to find people for those jobs. So um, we always like to get people with a little bit of experience and, and want to work with them. But um, sometimes that's not always possible. So someone shouldn't just feel like because they don't have a lot of experience that they can't immediately just start on a part-time basis. I think that's possible. And I also want to add, it has been incredibly flexible um, with raising children. I couldn't have asked for, personally, I feel like it's one of the best jobs for um, having the best of both worlds. You know, you feel like you have that stay-at-home mom 
uh, part of the time, but then you, you know, have your occupation part of the time. And I love it. I think it's been wonderful. I highly recommend if someone's interested to look into it because it's, it's great. I love that. And I love your passion for it. I can tell that you just found your calling in life. And I think that's wonderful. And it is, it's so good for, for those kiddos to, to see their mom working hard, but to see her also available in there. And so it's so exciting that you found a career like that, that you were able to, to get the best of both worlds for sure. So now I know that we're going to have teens out there that are like, okay, this interview has pumped me up. I'm excited about this, but I need to really get in and see if this is the right fit for me. So are there some um, volunteering opportunities or anything else out there for teens to really get a good feel for the ins and outs of every single day in this industry? Absolutely. Um, Because of HIPAA and privacy, things have changed quite a bit from when I first got out of school in terms of volunteers just being able to to shadow a speech pathologist. But um, I still think there's a lot of opportunity. I would contact, for example, in the hospital setting, maybe the HR department or just contact the speech pathology department directly and see what the procedures are at that at that specific location. And um, as a matter of fact, when I was in undergraduate before I was became a, uh, or was in uh, the graduate program for speech pathology, I volunteered at a local hospital and I volunteered a lot and I did a lot of making copies for them and doing little legwork things. But when they had opportunity, they, they would let me follow them with patients and Um, I fell in love. It was worth all of the photocopies I did um, to get that experience. So absolutely. Um, As a matter of fact, I said contact HR, but um, the human resources would probably call the speech pathology department. So just contact them directly. Okay, perfect. And then um, that leads me to the next thought of what are your most favorite parts of speech pathology and maybe your least favorite parts, because we know there's always paperwork and things like that. So can you give us a feel for that? Okay, so let me just start with the negatives and get that out of the way. Um, uh, There aren't many. Let me just be honest. In my personal opinion, I do feel like I've found a career that is a good fit for me. Um, The pay is not fantastic, but it's pretty good. So I think it's a solid um, salary for uh, the occupation, but it's it could be better. So that may be one, and then of course paperwork, but you just can't get out of that. If you're in any kind of a medical profession, um, frankly, most most professions, there's just paperwork. So those are probably the top two negatives. Um, Positives, which there are so many more positives. Um, The patient connection is fantastic. Um, If someone is looking for a career where they really feel like they can walk someone through a process and help them, this is amazing because you get to see people going through each stage of improvement and it's it's incredibly rewarding. As a matter of fact, I've um, developed friendships with a lot of my patients that, you know, I try to call them and keep in contact afterwards because you get to know the patients really well and their family members also. So to me, that's the top. Perfect. Um So any final words of encouragement for those girls out there watching this um, in terms of finding a career that fits for them or anything that you want to add in in the speech pathology area? So it's hard. It's hard to find a good fit. And um, I can say that, you know, as a woman in my 40s, it's still hard for a lot of my friends. You know, they are still thinking, you know, maybe I should go back to school for this or whatever it might be. And so it's it's a challenge. Um, my advice would be just to, you know, try different. Uh, volunteering is great. Try different volunteering in different areas that you think that you might enjoy. You know, you might even take a class here and there. And I think it it becomes fairly clear pretty quickly if it's not a fit. Um, There were some classes I took in college that I immediately thought, okay, I thought I would love this and I completely don't. So, you know, just, just put yourself out there and try and ask around and, you know, go to, you know, work, work day with someone or, or spend a little time in their office and see what you think. Yeah, that's, that's really good advice. And I'm wondering, I have kids in high school now, but I don't know if they have any classes in the high school setting that are targeted more towards this profession. Maybe it would just fall under like a health professions class. Health professions. I think 
it's one of those things that um, unless they specifically seek that information sometimes because there are so many professions out there unless you know you're proactive in looking into that so it's hard that's hard yeah always hard well thank you so much for spending some time with us april especially i know that that you are a busy mom and have a busy life so we appreciate it i hope that the girls watching this today will not only be excited about being a mom someday and and just the joys that come from being a mom, but also just excited to get out there and serve the community and make a difference. And I know, especially with speech pathology that you do, you're affecting so many people in a wonderful way. And I just think it's wonderful. So we Thank are so just so, so thankful for you. And thanks to everyone for watching. And we will see you all in the next video.